My name is Ntato. I'm from Johannesburg, South Africa. Um, I make music and uh, getting into making videos. You were in Fader magazine. How, has that has things changed since then? Has it given you a bigger platform or more people calling you or wanting to write about you? I'm always surprised by how many people knew about the that cover, that cover, the Fader cover. Um, I don't know. The momentum has just like grown. I don't know if Fader is a part of that or you know like, uh, if it's a cause of a lot of stuff. But uh, it's just part of the general momentum. So. So what, what are you working on now? Like, what can we expect next musically? I know you, well not just released, but you just had a video that yeah. has been getting a lot of play on the internet. A lot of people are talking about it. What else is next? Um, I'm working on my next album. Yeah, I'm finishing up to like um, get a release deal for that. With the, like, uh, it's, it, I started a band about, I guess, when I started making the album last January, that's when things started, started, but then in November things came together when this guitarist joined things. And I kind of twisted our sound and gave it more possibilities. And then boom, when all of that was happening, this kind of institution of American rock music hollered about releasing the next album, uh, Sub Pop. They put out like the first Nirvana, like, like they put out a lot of big records. And um, yeah, so that's what I'm working on. The next record, making good, exciting music. I'm going home to just like get in. Tell me about the video. I love that video with the little kids and they're on the um. On the, on the yeah, <laughs> and then y'all are like in the street, just like standing. <laughs> and it's like y'all. It seems like you just were like, we're gonna shoot the video right now yeah. and start filming, and people are like looking like what's going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah you should have seen the stuff because it was like. Um, I'm in Johannesburg and this friend of mine, good friend of mine, he works for like this ad agency and he's like a ill director and I'm like, dude, shoot me a video. He's like, yeah, I'm writing a treatment. But then we have a meeting with his producer and she's like, um, yeah, it's going to cost this much money. And I'm like, where am I going to get that money? He's like, no. So he ends up bitching out on me. Like, Terrence, I love you, but you bitched out on me. So I linked up with this guy. As I'm in this neighborhood, Yovo, I hear like this music. I start walking around. I'm with my big brother walking around, walk into the store. So the guy starts speaking to me, he's a journalist and a video director from Cameroon, Don Piro. Okay. And he speaks like 60% French, and I speak like really bad French. But the whole time speaking to me, he's super enthusiastic, and he yeah. says, yeah, let's shoot it like on Tuesday. This is like the other Thursday, it's like, let's shoot it on Tuesday. I'm like, boom. Yeah. And, like how much money? And he says, it's like, boom, you know? Like, let's shoot it, let's shoot it. When we linked up, it was just like, like we did it really quickly. He sent me the edits in like three days. He had already right. done it. Like that was the mentality that I like go in and just do it. And that's how we approached shooting on the day as well. And the kids were cool. We had like um, we had a dance competition. I bought all these toys the day before, so there was a dance competition. We had like the snacks out. It was like a little party in the park. I know those little boys. I was like, oh look at that. Yeah. It was fun. It looked so like cool. it was like fun the whole time. It was like just a big party. Yeah. About your music, like I find that it's such, it's like it's such a range. Like yeah. you could have some stuff that's you know like very like hip hop, and then like the latest video that you just had that seems like very experimental. So how do you? Is it you know why such that big range, or is it just that you like so many things, so you're just trying to yeah. put a little bit? Of it's all it's all weird. There? It's like um, that's like just plainly who I am, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I like things that much. And I don't think I have, to. yeah, it's tough. I think for marketing, it makes it a lot more difficult if something's like, yeah, because then where do you put it in the store? Like as far as categorizing stuff, where are you gonna put it, maybe in the pop releases, you know? Then it's just like the biggest shit out, the new releases, the exciting thing. But it won't fit in, the hip hop section won't fit in the wall, wall, wall. But yeah, I, I think like genres are so, Passe. I think it's such an old idea. I think it's super old school to like classify stuff like that because I'm influenced by a lot of shit. Um, this is your. You said you talked about your kind of on a tour of sorts. You've been driving through yeah. the United States of America. What has that been like compared to driving through South Africa? I know it's a whole uh, lot different than. It's no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess it's kind of the same because there's 
there's those big cities on the coast, like South Africa, you go Johannesburg, Cape Town, Durban, those are the main things, but in between there's this like, you know, country people, kind of backward people, exciting people, honest people, like earnest people, good people, bad yeah. people, yeah? But it's been cool. I've been wary because my, my engagement with America is a lot of uh, like old books, a lot of like, you know, the country and hillbillies and people stringing you up and setting you alight. So I was a bit like shook up. And I we, think we, we were like, we're in Clayton, Colorado. This guy comes up to the car, he's like, what's a black man doing in Clayton? That was like his first words. Oh my god, <laughs> But he ended up being kind of cool. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what's going on. Politically like, or socially? Or? Um, I guess maybe start out like like socially, like you talk about your peers. Like, is you know, like, is it a, like a nurturing environment? Like, like what's going on? Art music, because you you do more than just music. You're making yeah. films. You're into fashion. So there's yeah. a lot that's influencing you. So I would think that there's this kind there's, of culture happening in South Africa yeah. right now. Yeah, that's been really exciting for the last for the last period to look around and just find that there's great artists who are around my age, like really phenomenal artists. Like there's this guy um, Ati Patra. He's a performance artist, but he also does like um, sculptures and crocheting stuff, but he does like physical performance stuff as well. And he's phenomenal and he's from the Eastern Cape, he's like a Kosa guy, but he's of my generation and dealing with kind of, I think, the same um, dynamics of having gone to certain schools, but coming from another culture and that kind of clash and what it creates for him now. And then, um, yeah, who else is really great? There's this guy Kudzinai. He's a painter. He's like doing really well, I think. And he's from Zimbabwe, but he's lived in Johannesburg for a long time. He's really, really great. And yeah, there's I think there's there's a good energy of young artists coming up. Do you so. find that most of the artists are coming out of townships, or is it that maybe there are people who've gone abroad and they've come back and started well, doing so, things? Well, South Africa isn't so much about uh, like township versus abroad, it's more like um, there were laws that said that black people could only live in certain areas, but when those laws stop, then black people could live wherever they want, you know what I mean? So black people live in the fancy suburbs as well. Like my life was really split between the early township upbringing and then moving to like the white suburb with the high walls and where you don't know your neighbors and all that. So artists are coming from, I think, all kinds of backgrounds, yeah. And how is, is there, support for artists like if you're like okay i'm into that's the fashion thing. that's the thing into... though if you're if you're like the middle class kid and your parents own like a mind it's easy for you to do like whatever you want to do <laughs> you know it's easy for you to do whatever you want to do and i think for kids coming from different backgrounds from like you know poorer backgrounds it's harder but guys go hard man that's the most exciting thing to see people like do it whatever yeah. the case is So just to talk a little bit about your style, like where do you like where do you get your stuff from your clothes, like what you're wearing now, like yeah. the hat, like it's it seems it's a little bit it seems like it's somewhat influenced by like eighties, nineties, like that yeah. kind of feel. But like in South Africa, you you shopping locally or are you like getting things in, thrifting? Um, I'm cheap. I'm really cheap. So whatever I'm buying, it's the it's the best looking cheap thing in any store I walk in. That sums it up. Yeah. yeah. Cool. But so, when I say cheap, I mean like, like download cheap, cheap, cheap. I'm trying to get stuff for a dollar, two dollars, and get out of it. This I just picked up today and like, the Mexican guy for a dollar, like, boom, it's gone. Nice. Because there's also a laundry, <laughs> there's also a laundry crisis on the tour. A, yeah, like. A fashion is great. <laughs> Laundry crisis. <laughs> fashion is great, but like function is phenomenal, you know? No, true, true, true. But talking about plugging, I'm talking about this next record that doesn't even exist. My record is out now on BBE Records called Mshinwa. Spook my time on you need to hear that. It's a fresh business coming out of South Africa. I'm talking like some airy fairy record that doesn't exist. The record is out and it's hot. Get some of that. Pop, 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 pop,